Hey everybody, it's Kate. I'm coming to you today to film a little tutorial um, on how to make fabric envelopes. I was recently involved in a swap uh, on the Art Attack and Tilda Friends uh, Facebook group and I had somebody ask for a tutorial on how I made my envelopes for the swap. So the swap was for uh, six three by three uh, tilde note cards and I wanted to do something special with mine instead of just using tilde paper so I decided to make fabric envelopes for three of my note cards and so I'm going to show you how I did that today uh, so the first thing I want to do is kind of just talk to you about what we're going to need uh, and then we'll get right into it um, so obviously you're going to need uh, a, a template for your envelope and so all I did was go to, was use my We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board and I made an envelope that was uh, three and a half by three and a half. Now my note cards are only three by three, which is what this craft is here. Uh, but you're gonna need some ease, what they call ease or space uh, for you to make your seams and then also space for the, uh, for the note card to fit down in the fabric envelope after you've got it sewn. So I made it, um, so instead of making a three by three envelope, I made a three and a half envelope, uh, three and a half by three and a half so that we would have that space. So I just wanted to show you that. And then, so what I did was uh, make my envelope and then I closed up the sides and placed adhesive here like you would if you're gonna make uh, an envelope and then I took my scissors and just cut on cut the sides open on both on both sides of my envelope and here's what I ended up with a template okay so we're gonna need one of those uh, so you can use an envelope that you've gotten at the store uh, you can make an envelope uh, for whatever size you want but we are gonna need one of these so that we can trace around it Okay, and then obviously uh, we're going to need some fabric. I'm going to use again today this beautiful uh, Sybil tan yellow tilde fabric. Um, you can buy this at Tracy's shop, which is artitechsupplies.com. We're also going to need a piece of lining fabric. Um, this is just, I, th I think this is from a, like a cheapo white sheet that I bought at Walmart. Um, you're not going to need very much fabric, obviously, um, but depending on the size of your envelope, you may need more. Uh, I am also going to be using uh, some hemostats uh, for turning uh, our envelope. Um, this is also, uh, I don't know if this is like a cheapo wooden bone folder or if it actually is a fabric turner. I've had it for years. It's wooden. It's got stuff all over it. Anyway, but you'll need something with like a sharpish point uh, so that when we turn our envelope inside out, we can make our uh, make our uh, our corners and our curves uh, nice and crisp. Okay. Uh, you're also going to need some fabric scissors. Uh, we will need um, something to mark your fabric with. You can use a chalk marker. Uh, I have been using this a Fine Point Mark Be Gone pen. Uh, it makes a blue mark, but uh, it totally erases as soon as it touches water, so I really like that. You can get this at Joanne or uh, Ho I'm sure they've got them at Hobby Lobby. Um, I think they've got them at Hancock. So just about anywhere that, that does fabric uh, will have that. We're going to need some uh, a couple of buttons if you want to do a button and string closure on your envelope like what I did. Uh, and we're going to need some string for the, it's got a little something on it there, uh, <laughs> the, uh, some string for our button and string closure. This is uh, not embroidery floss. It's actually craft thread and it comes in a bag of a bunch of them for just a couple of dollars. Uh, it will be near the embroidery thread. Obviously, we are going to need uh, an iron as well. And then you will need some double-sided uh, fusible web. Uh, when I made my original envelopes, I used this uh, light steamacine too. Uh, this is, and like it says here, it's double stick fusible web because we need something that's going to be sticky on both sides to, uh, to complete our envelope. Uh, so this is what I originally used when I made uh, the first set of um, the note card envelopes. But I, I actually used 
the very last of it, <laughs> making those envelopes for Vaughn. So um, I need to replace this, and I could have ordered it, uh, but it wouldn't have been here in time for me to film this tutorial as quickly as I wanted to. Uh, so I actually ended up going to the Hancock, and I got this. Uh, this is the same thing. It's just not the light version. It's Steamacine 2, uh, double stick fusible web. Uh, and it comes, uh, by the yard. You can buy it by the yard. Um, and it's in a little box in the sewing section. And, uh, so I ended up, uh, getting some of this. So we'll see how well this works today. So obviously this is just going to be a little stiffer, uh, than the other ones. But I don't think, uh, it should affect anything. And I just need a very small piece today. Uh, not any bigger than our envelope here. Okay. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, you'll need some matching thread. Obviously, I'm going to use some pretty pink thread today. Uh, and you will need a sewing machine unless you plan on hand stitching uh, the envelope, which is totally possible. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Okay, uh, so I think that's everything we're going to need, uh, but surely I'm forgetting something. And if I am, um, obviously, I'll just talk about it as I use it. So, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, after I move all this junk out of the way, uh, is I'm going to take my patterned fabric and I'm going to turn it, let's see, no, I'm going to have it facing up because we want to meet right sides together when we sew our envelope together. And then I'm going to take my line and fabric and put it right side down. Um, for this fabric, it doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, if you were going to use another pattern fabric, it would matter. Uh, and then I'm going to take my template, place it in the middle of my fabric like this. And then I'm going to use my Mark Be Gone pen to trace around my template. So, uh, we're actually, obviously, we're going to have to turn our envelope inside out, so we're going to need to leave an opening for that. So I marked on my template here, open. So when I trace my template onto my fabric, I am going to leave um, this open so that it's a visual reminder to me when I go to my sewing machine not to sew across this part because you'll do it, I promise you. <laughs> Especially if you've not done a lot of sewing, you will sew across your opening and then have to use a seam ripper to get it out. But anyway, so I've already uh, traced around the outside of my template here and you're just going to go obviously all the way around until you get here to this other uh to the top of the opening um i'm not sure yeah you can see the mark on camera um so i'm just going to take it to my sewing machine and i'm going to sew all the way around uh, all the way around my mark here okay so uh i will meet you back at the sewing machine Okay, so here we are back at our sewing machine. Um, and just as an easy way of showing you what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here at this, uh, at the bottom of our uh, opening for turning our envelope. And I'm actually going to start sewing here and I'm going to sew two or three stitches down. I'm going to put my machine in reverse, sew two or three stitches back, and then continue to sew around the rest of my um my line uh, you know that I've traced onto my fabric and the reason we want to do that reverse stitching here is to reinforce this opening anytime you're going to turn um, you're going to turn an item uh, you need to reinforce the openings so that it doesn't pull apart while you're trying to turn it so I'm going to do that here just three or four stitches is all you need and then when I get uh, to the end here or the top of my opening I'm also going to reinforce that. Uh, for stitch length I am using um, just a slightly shorter stitch length than I might otherwise use uh, because if you use a shorter stitch length it will allow you to be more accurate uh, as you're sewing along and turning here, like for instance, I'm going to make a, a little curve here to match the curve in my template and it'll make things a little easier when I'm sewing if I'm not taking these huge big stitches. If I'm taking maybe let's say I'm putting it on a two here is what I'm going to have my sewing machine on. So the stitches are small enough to allow you to Take a little stitch and then turn a little if you need to. Take a little stitch and then turn a little if you need to. Um, so this is not going to be fast sewing. Um, 
but it should be actually perfect for a beginner. You can kind of learn uh, how you're, you'll get to know your sewing machine better doing it this way. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is get started here. Um, I've just got my regular old foot on my sewing machine and uh, I'm going to start sewing. So I'm sewing a around the other side <laughs> of this um, camera here. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. I'm going to put my presser foot down. Sew three or four stitches. I'm going to hit my reverse lever on the other side. Sew three or four stitches and then I'm going to sew around my envelope here. And I'm going to put this part, hopefully, on uh, Fast Play if I can learn how to use my uh, new video editing software. I got a free trial, so I'm going to try to use it for this uh, so that you don't have to sit through um, all this sewing. And then before I put it on, put it on Fast Play, let me just say that when you're turning the corners and whatnot, um, just take your time. You know, go nice and slow. Um, <clears throat> when you need to turn, you're going to start. Uh, you're going to stop sewing uh, it, with your needle in the down position, and then you're just going to lift your presser foot, turn it, lower your presser foot, and start sewing again. So I need to take one more stitch here, and then we'll get her going on a fast play so that you don't have to sit through me sewing this. <laughs> Okay, so here we are um, <clears throat> back uh, around, excuse me, uh, back around. Uh, so we've sewn all the way around now, and we're about to come to our um, little opening here. So again, I'm going to stitch right up to the opening, reverse uh, three or four stitches, and then stitch back to our opening, and then we're done with this part. So I'm going to stitch right up to my mark there. And reverse. And then stitch forward one more time. Okay. Now we can remove our envelope. And here's what we've got. Cool, huh? Okay, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is iron our, uh, our piece here, so I will meet you back at the ironing board. Okay, so now we are back at our uh, iron, 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 we're back at our iron board this morning. Uh, so the first thing we want to do after we've sewn our first seam around the edges here is iron our piece before we do anything else with it. Uh, you always want to do this uh, when you're sewing. It uh, sets your stitches um, and makes them look straighter uh, and it makes the whole finished piece look cleaner. So this is definitely um, not a, a step I would skip. Uh, it, just, it just makes everything look better. And now I've forgotten to trim my little thread edges here so I'm just going to do that right quick my little thread edges that's weird uh, my threads I'm gonna take those off right quick okay uh, and the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut around our uh, seam with uh, a one-quarter inch 
about a scant, what they call a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So just slightly less uh, than one quarter of an inch. And I am using uh, some smaller sewing scissors for this. Uh, it does not have to be perfect, uh, but you, you really want to be pretty consistent, especially if your lining fabric is relatively thin like mine is because in the end uh, this seam will show through just slightly on uh, the outside well it's it's really going to be the inside of your your envelope but this seam will show through I'll show you that when we get to that that part So I'm just going to continue to cut around with a scant quarter of an inch like I said. And then we're going to do some more little trimming uh, when we get done with this part so that our uh, envelopes will, will turn nicely. Okay, so that's scrap so we don't need to fool with that anymore. Okay, so Everywhere where we've got a curve, uh, here, here at this point, and here, uh, and then also here, we are going to want to take some tiny little cuts right up to the seam line. So here, I'm going to do three, three tiny little cuts there. And what that's going to do, I'm going to come around to the top of our envelope and I'm going to do the same thing. One, two, three. Uh, we, we obviously you want to cut right up to your seam, but not through your seam. One, two, three. And what this allows is for you when you turn your fabric, it will keep this from being bulky right here when you turn it. Okay. So I think that's good, although I think I'm just going to, on these little corners, I'm going to chop off just a little edge like that and cut me some little, little slits in that as well. So I'm going to chop off the edge and cut some little slits. Okay, so now we're ready to turn. And I actually really do not like my lighting right now, so give me just a second. I am going to attempt to adjust it so that it's not quite as. Let's see if that looks any better. Mm, I don't know, that'll do. Okay, so now uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, add our. Um, sticky back fusible web to uh, our project here. So all I did was take a piece of uh, the web and I traced around uh, our template on top of the web just like this all the way around uh, just using a regular pencil and then I cut it out and when I did I cut it out inside my line that I drew around the template. Okay. Uh, and I used regular scissors for this. I would not use my good sewing scissors. Pretty kind of particular about that. So then we're just going to lay this down on top of the wrong side of our pattern fabric here. And then I've got my iron set to the wool setting. Uh, what you'll want to do is read on uh, whatever fusible web it is. Well, gee whiz. Uh, this is not going to work if I don't take the release paper off the back. Uh, so here's the release paper. That's got to be removed. Okay. And then, uh, now I'm going to stick this down on my fabric. It's not going to work if you leave the release paper on there. <laughs> okay, and so that can be thrown away with our other scraps and now I'm going to pass the iron over again again with it on my uh, wool setting okay I'm gonna let it cool for just a second 
because then that release paper will come off. Okay, let's see how we've got a good bond here. Not on that edge. Okay, still not sticking to my fabric, so I'm going to heat it a little longer. The instructions on this seam of seam too say to go ahead and turn your your iron up. Uh, I was a little afraid to do that, but I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put some steam on it as well. It says it can take the heat. I guess we'll find out. I'll let it cool again. I'll fast forward through this part so y'all don't have to listen to it. I guess I could sing a little for y'all. That might be fun. <laughs> Okay, let's see now. There we go. Now it's wanting to release. So now we've got a good bond, and I can pull the second piece of release paper off there. Okay, now now it's going to be time to turn our envelope. So I'm going to get um, this little turny thing here and then my hemostats. So we're going to go and find our unsewn edge. There it is. And then we're going to turn our envelope inside out. Uh, what can you, what you can do ahead of time is kind of uh, you want something that's kind of sharp, but not that's going to poke through the fabric. Obviously, so you can take this like this, press it right into that uh, the top here, this part of the envelope, and push that through to get your uh, your turn started here. And I'm hoping that my adhesive here does not stick to itself while I'm turning because it actually acts like that's exactly what it's going to do and that's not going to be fine. Uh, what I might should have done was leave the release paper on long enough to turn it and then uh, remove it. We'll just find out how it's going to work here. And uh, <clears throat> the warmer it is, the stickier it is, and uh, the more you handle it, obviously, the warmer it's going to get. So I might actually go stick it in the refrigerator right quick if I have a hard time getting it to let loose. Okay. This is another reason I would have preferred to use the light version, but I think we're going to make it here. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the point of my stick here and just run it along the edge of my seam. So we got a little threads hanging out there. Let's go ahead and cut those off. Okay, now, and I'm going to do that along the entire length of it uh, to make the seam come out nice and, and smooth when I get ready to turn it over and iron it. And then I'm going to come in here and go ahead and turn out our little, our little corners here. So that's these pieces. And we'll see how well they turn out. It should help that we uh, cut those little slits, so that's not too bad. I would like it to be a little sharper there. So you see what I'm doing here. You just work it until you get it how you want it. I'm going to work that edge a little bit more, okay? And then I'm not, still not happy with that one, so I'm going to work that a little bit more. Get my corner turned a little better. Okay, that looks a little better, a little sharper. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of pull it to get that adhesive to release from itself. <laughs> yeah, this stuff uh, is a somewhat more aggravating to work with than the light, so I would recommend the light. You won't have uh, nearly so much difficulty with it um, sticking to itself as I'm having here. Okay, so I missed this seam up here. It's sticking to my folder as well. My hands are a little too warm to be doing this too. Okay, <clears throat> now we're a little closer. If I can get this to go out straight here. Okay. 
yeah, I would definitely recommend using the lighter uh, steam a seam. This stuff is entirely too tough for our purposes because this little envelope is so small, it does not need a whole lot of reinforcement. Okay, now, so what I'm gonna do is flip it over. Here's our little opening. So we wanna make sure that our little opening is right in line with our seamed line, and it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron it. And I'm gonna put the steam to it pretty heavy so that our envelope comes out nice and crisp looking. And here's what I was talking about, about being able to see the little seam line there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, drop a little steam on it and see how it does. Oh, um, excuse me, y'all. Okay, got a little something, there we go. Our water here is really gross and hard, so it kind of gets in my iron and clogs it up. So I think there you can see how that little seam is showing, okay? All right, so now uh, we are getting close to the end here. All we need to do now is head back to the sewing machine and uh, sew our side seams for our envelope. So I will meet you back at the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are back at our sewing machine. And the only thing I forgot to tell you to do is turn up this bottom flap and press it in place. So I just used uh, my little template again, uh, folded up the bottom, and then uh, use this to show me how far up to, uh, to fold it uh, before I ironed it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a seam and we're gonna start here and we're gonna seam at one bottom edge and we're gonna seam all the way around uh, the edge here. <clears throat> we are going to reinforce, um, you know, uh, do our reverse stitching on this edge and this edge on each side uh, because anywhere there's going to be a stress point which will be right here and these little two corners you want to reinforce that like we said before uh, and so when we turn it over we'll have this beautiful top stitched edge across uh, uh, well across or around the entire envelope so here we go I'm using the same stitch length as I was before and I'm going to stitch just one eighth of an inch maybe just a little more so right there okay I'm gonna let my presser foot guide me on this And you will see me uh, stop sewing and lift my presser foot quite frequently um, so that I can get a really good idea of where my needle is and where my next stitch is going to go. Okay, so now we've got our little envelope sewn together. So cute! Okay, so I'm going to grab me some scissors and just cut my little thread tails here. And I believe we will be finished with the sewing machine work on our little envelope here. So the next thing we're going to do is attach our buttons and we are finished. So I'll meet you back at the ironing board. Okay, so now we're back at our uh, ironing board and we are almost finished. So the next thing I'm going to do is fold my top flap down and iron it in place. Okay. Now we are going to attach our little buttons. Uh, I've already taken, uh, this is a pretty decent sized needle because this string or 
craft thread is so thick uh, but I'm already taken and made a tiny little knot on the edge and then I chopped off uh, I chopped off the little thread tail that was left because we want just a little tiniest little knot and if you want to you can actually take and place your button and then use your marker to mark where you want to start your um, where you want to start your thread at so what I'm going to do, uh, you're probably not going to be able to see those marks on camera, but what I'm going to do is go just to the right of this second mark because I do not want my knot to show up in the hole of the little button. Okay, so I'm going to go just to the right of my first little mark. I'm going to go right through the fabric and then out through my second little mark. Okay, so now um, we've got our thread anchored and the knot should be hidden under, um, under this part of the button here. Okay, uh, and then here's the back. See, I think the little, uh, the little, <laughs> the little thread throwing, showing through the back is pretty cute. And as a matter of fact, if you have some buttons with four holes, then it'll make a precious little X on the back here and that would be even cuter. But anyway, I don't. So here we go. Uh, so I'm going to go up through <clears throat> the left hand hole of my button because that's where my thread's coming up through and back down through the right there. And then I'm just going to leave it hanging a little bit and I'm going to go right back through where I was before. Only this time I'm going to go through my mark, my first mark I made instead of, uh, <clears throat> instead of going just to the right of it because now I'm not trying to hide a... Uh, A thread tail and I'm gonna just have a quick little look on the back here to make sure that my thread is gonna line up and it is so I'm gonna pull that tight now let's make sure our buttons not turn the wrong way which it was okay and so now I'm just gonna hold my little button down with my with my thumb Okay, and so I'm going to take, I'm going to go through one more time. I'm going to come up through here, up through the right hand side, down through the left. Okay, and then I'm going to go right back down in my fabric again. Ooh, let me get into frame. Okay. See, I'm checking on the back side as I go to make sure I don't have these lines all crisscrossed around on the back. So there's that. Now I'm going to come back up through from the back side one more time. And this time I'm going to make a second knot. Our second knot. Okay. So this is how I do it. I take two fingers and wrap, pass my needle through. And then I'm going to leave that, uh, my two fingers in, make sure I'm in frame, in here. And I'm going to pull this part all the way underneath the button. And then I'm going to reach in there and place my finger on top of that knot I can feel forming and pull uh, my thread through. That way we will ensure that the knot ends up underneath the button. Okay, so I am not going to cut this uh, thread off here because I'm going to use that to wrap. So uh, I'm going to do the same procedure for my uh, second button. And I will uh, meet you right back here in just a second. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm back and we've got our uh, second button sewn on here. So the only thing left to do is to wrap our string however many times you want to wrap it. I'm just going to do a couple here. And then once around the bottom and then I'm just going to cut the excess string off because we don't need all that. And so now we've got our cute little fabric envelope just precious I think they're so cute so you can obviously you can use any fabric you want any buttons you want uh, you can put anything in these you want you can use any size you want uh, if you can have an envelope I'm pretty sure you can make a, a fabric one for it 
so there it is um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial I hope it made sense um, I hope my camera work wasn't too bad and I hope when I get ready to edit that's gonna go well too uh, so anyway uh, thanks everybody for watching I really appreciate it if you have any questions um, please let me know and uh, I hope you have a really great day bye